Wanna Go Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. I want to start today's episode with a story. Uh. A story about a young, handsome gentleman named Harold Ballard. Oh. Who did so much good to the franchise that we love so much. Oh, dear. So if you remember last episode, I was telling you about this interview that I heard in the CBC archives about, uh, you know, Harold Ballard. And kind Bit of, of a nasty te- chap. Telling the, uh, telling the female announcer, can you shut the woman up so I can have a man's conversation? Even worse, he didn't tell the female announcer that. He told the male announcer. That's right. That. He told the male announcer. <laughs> I think it was Dick Irwin. <laughs> he and, didn't even address her. And he wouldn't even address her because she kept asking him, you know, pointed questions. Yes. Well, you know. So our friend Aiden Northcott, he's a longtime uh, listener to the show. Brother said, of Sage from yep. the UFC. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, he said, hey, Adam, I'm listening to the latest podcast, and I love the part about Harold Ballard. I took a class in university called the Economics of Sports, and for my final paper, I wrote about how Harold Ballard was the worst sports owner ever. This wow. would be an interesting list to compare. Worst sport, sports owner in history, because like, there's a few bad ones right now. But I don't know if they, any of them can top this ridiculousness, and the story I'm about to tell you is insane. And this used to happen all the time in Toronto. Okay, I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Back in the 1960s, the Beatles were playing a show at Maple Leaf Gardens. Without the Beatles. Tel- the Beatles. You know, like, the, like the Beatles. Like John the Paul Beatles. George and Ringo. <laughs> yeah, before they stopped touring. So this is probably mid 60s, 66. The band that used to open for the monkeys. No. No? Never happened. Oh, d- no. okay. Great. Uh, back in the 1960s, the Beatles were playing a show at Maple Leaf Gardens. Without telling the band, Ballard sold tickets for a second concert at the Garden. <laughs> How do you even? The Beatles, <laughs> being good guys, obliged and they played the second Just show. Just the show? <laughs> so that's one part. <laughs> part two is my favorite. Was the second show on the same night? No, no, or it was, was the next night. night. I think it was the next night. No, okay. I don't even know if they'd survive. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is my favorite, though. <laughs> Second part is my favorite. That summer, Toronto is was in the middle of a wicked heat wave. So you can imagine, Maple Leaf Gardens, probably semi-air-conditioned, but not really. Um, Ballard, trying to squeeze fans dry, quite literally, disconnected all the water to the fountains in the arena, and then tripled the f- price of fountain pop, which were the <laughs> only drinks being served. Oh my God. Now, if you're a Cowboys fan and you think Jerry Jones was an a hole, or you think Dan Snyder's an a hole, which he is. Or w- which, there were a couple of NFL I mean, teams Sni- that Dan got S- caught. I think Dan Snyder, I think Dan Snyder still wins this, this one. But Harold Ballard was a class A jackass. What a piece of shit. That's a terrible thing to do. There were, uh, weren't there a couple of NFL teams that were caught recently? Like, uh, Oh, their medium pop is the same size, uh, same size as a large pop. No way. Yeah, and dastardly so deeds. But he shut off the. What a prick! Oh my goodness. So that's how things used to be. If you were a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, shout out Jeff Merrick. He buried him. He did. He told Jeff that story. Merrick literally buried Hal- Harold Ballard. He worked at oh, a funeral. Oh, do you mean he wrote a scathing piece on him? No, like with dirt. You mm-hmm. put him in the ground. Again, I don't know what, what the holdup's been on speaking out about. That's like, a crazy Nobody's story. compiled a list of all the things that that guy did, but everything I've heard about him has been not oh, bad, Harold Ballard. but nasty. I'm like, Jeff? Oh. Amazing career. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm talking about, no, like oh. nobody's come out and said, listen, these are all the terrible things that happened. I'm surprised what is because that? I, I don't know. I feel like there's a bit of protectionism going on there. I don't know why. Um, I'm not sure I understand the the, because like it's funny because we talk about the Leafs record in the 70s and 80s and you'll you'll see if you look it up that they do make the playoffs but that's a bit of a misnomer because the league had 20 teams and like 16 made the playoffs yeah Um, they were they would like be under 500 and making the playoffs yes I I often wonder why this isn't more of like a holy smokes like look at this guy you know, like There's in a lot the states, of holy smokes things about the past. There, in the states, though, you know? he would have been. This would have been dragged out long ago. I'm surprised. Like Deadspin would have pulled this. If if the, Toronto was in the United States, Deadspin would have been all over this. He was the least owner for how long though? 20, 25 years. Oh man, from the '60s to I think he died in '91. I think it was like 35 years. I think a lot of people were just like, "Oh, that's Harold. That's Harold." Though, I I don't know. Then the other thing I found um, is I've had a difficult time finding like confirmed written um 
stories of all the legends of Harold Ballard. Me too. Like I, I've told stories. Nobody on this wants podcast to talk. Where I've been like, let me just look that up to make sure, and I couldn't find it. I, but I know the story. How did I get the story? I didn't make it up. It's I don't know. And again, I can't confirm that that's true. I mean, uh, Aiden, Aiden says it's true. I again, there isn't as you said. There's no like database for that. Aiden obviously did his research, but holy smokes. Well, in that interview I've brought up, I saw it with my own two eyes, where he was talking about, they talked about the performance of, like, some Czech Leafs player, and he goes, well, he's a dumb Czech. <laughs> I saw it with my own two, not, uh, two eyes, but I can't find it anywhere. I can't find it. <sighs> They're better now. Better now. Do you want some good owning franchise stories? Sure. Are there any? There's one. Of Harold That's Ballard? going on right now. Oh. Um, the Atlanta Falcons. They built a brand new stadium this year. Ah, Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz Stadium. Mercedes Benz. Yes, Stadium. and their food prices are the lowest food prices ever in major sports. I think you're joking. I am not. Really? Do you want to hear some of these prices? Yes. Yes. Okay. A classic hot dog. How much do you think it costs? Five dollars. Well, if it's the cheapest ever, yeah, it's five dollars at Sky Dome. Sorry, Roger Center. That is what eleven bucks, ten bucks. Yeah, well, it's ten fifty. I think for a hot <laughs> dog. people make a big deal. Of do- yeah. People make a big deal of Dodger dogs, and they're like twenty bucks, and they're just a, a hot dog in a bun. Like they're not even <laughs> just. Uh, they called it a Dodger dog. A Fenway but- Frank is literally a, the tiniest hot dog in between Wonder Bread. I had one at Fenway, and I was so disappointed. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, all you need to say about food is it's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. If anyone ever tells you it's the best thing ever and then you get it, it's never, never <laughs> once the best thing ever. That's why Steve won't watch Game of Thrones, even though it is quite <laughs> literally the best. <laughs> it's the best. It's quite literally anything is less the best. than the best, screw you. What a waste of time. <laughs> when I, I saw a I can guarantee game. you Game of Thrones is not a Dodger dog, okay? I can guarantee it. Is, is it the best? It might be. Might yeah. Be, might be. Do I Honestly, gotta see it? Yeah, you yeah, do. You but gotta, I don't. You gotta hashtag gotta see it. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> ah, SN gotta see. We gotta right? hashtag united by sport. They should put all the... all the. <laughs> Shut up, Shut up. Those are sports... <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know, those are sports net slogans. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, no, I, I was at a Giants game, and they're like, you gotta get these, like, parm fries we have. And they're good. Mm-hmm. But I gotta have them. I'll never be able to replicate this what experience. You, what do you think this is with Steve? That, I, that some, I'm we, difficult. Somebody tells him something's really good. Yeah. And then he has it and he can't like it. I've thought about that. Yeah. Because this is this a thing. Is? This is a pattern. Yeah. I'm a Leafs fan. I'm afraid of getting hurt. No, I, I think I think <laughs> That's it's, it. I think it runs a little deeper than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Let's think, analyze me. I think, <laughs> let's do that. Why are we also, talking about hockey? Eventually, let's we'll get, get back we'll to get these prices. Yeah. Okay. I think the issue here is that Steve. Steve went. Steve grew up in a time in Toronto where people were a bit snobby, and and Ryerson University. I found I found this kids I went to school with at least. If anybody liked anything, that thing like anybody older than them liked anything, instantly that thing was uncool. Mm. Oh, we can't like that. I had a really hard time clicking with a lot of people at Ryerson. I did too, really hard. Yeah, like I remember I just... a guy who actively downloaded elevator music. That was one of the guys I went to school with. <laughs> he was like, oh, I just love this jam. And then it was just oh, like, what? oh, like we go to his like residence and he'd be like, oh, check out this crunchy jam. Like it was just like, <laughs> it was like I'm like, literally this is elevator music. He's like, it's the best. And he really meant it. He really meant it. Steve, I think that you, as much as you are mainstream media, you're MSM now. I, I think there's, yeah. a, there's a counterculture element to you that's kind of like, yeah, you know what establishment? I don't care. I don't care what you like. I'm, I don't I'm care punk what rock. sixty. Yeah, well, yeah. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I think that you're you're a guy like you're the you are a little difficult. You're the no, no. And know what's funny about Have it. Have a nice day. We'll see. You even that. if yeah. even if we know you would like it, you still won't test it. You still won't even. Try. You've just made up your mind. Nope. Wall is up. I don't being. I don't like being told to do things. I like discovering that's, it on my yeah, own. I think that's it. That's what yeah. I mean, though. It's like, well, it's, it, it, that's what makes it counterculture, right? you got to have it? these parm fries. You're not the boss of me. Right? That's, that's what I'm saying. We have to, like, leave Game of Thrones on a counter somewhere, and he has to be like, oh, what is this? I'll check it out. Yeah. And then he has to discover it on his own. You know yeah. who, You know the key is, is Mrs. Dangle. Mm. We talked to Mrs. Dangle. We get her into it, and I think she'd get into it. Mm-hmm. She, she is really good at making things sound appealing, though. 
She has a doctorate in she'd convincing have, me. She'd of have things. to be with you. Oh yeah, she'd have to be like she's probably. Oh, so you'd a, never do anything <laughs> ever. <laughs> Just <laughs> watch hockey and play NHL and sing out the basement. Well, and keep in mind though, it's not like, like she's the nicest cup of tea either. She's not just Scottish, but from Scotland. Yes. Oh yeah, they're not stubborn at all. <laughs> Holy mackerel, trying to convince her of things. Listen, I wasn't. It's, by the way, I wasn't trying to be house insulting. It's just a constant debate. <laughs> Just listen, like, we, we don't even sit down on the couch together. We just stand at podiums as we ask each other how our day was. By the way, uh, I wasn't trying to be insulting. I think that there is a, no, there's a, there's a guy, it. you're not the boss of me. There's a, you're not the boss of me in Steve Dangle. Yeah, you're not the boss of me. Yeah. Don't tell me what to think. Don't, don't tell me something's good. I'll make that decision for myself when I never watch the thing that you say is good. Yeah. <laughs> What? I almost, I'll show you by never viewing an episode. C- Cersei, or whatever her name is? Well, Cersei about that. Right? What, is Cersei the, the... She's the mean one. She's the mean one? Oh, yeah, Cersei Lannister. Who, she's the one who sneers at everyone. She's the actress who was the queen of Sparta in 300, yes, right? Yes, Okay. She's awesome. I forget her name. Like, she's one of the best characters ever. Lena Hadley, I think? Uh, Hadley? yes. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. I believe you. Mm-hmm. Lena Hadley. I have faith. Yeah. She's awesome. How expensive are the hot dogs? Hot dogs <laughs> at Mercedes Benz Stadium are $2. What? Wow. Lowest price in the sports? Waffle fries. What are they made of? <laughs> Whatever Steve, hot never dogs. Never ask what <laughs> hot dogs are made of, man. Waffle mm. fries. $3. More expensive than the hot dog. Concerning. A slice of pizza. $3. Nachos. $3. A classic cheeseburger. $5. Okay, come on. How We're much? We're not trying to break the bank here. How much do you think a, a regular Coca Cola with unlimited refills costs? Oh, it's got to be like I, it has to be a, a couple dollars. I'm gonna say a dollar ninety nine. Two dollars. Hey. <laughs> and uh, to round it out, a Bud Light, a twelve ounce Bud Light, is five dollars. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's like wow. a that's like pub price. It's. That's cheaper that's than pub than price. Pub, yeah. That's Oshawa pub price. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, not, don't that's speak ill of the tartan. <laughs> don't speak ill of the tartan. If, if we go to the Brazen Head near Jesse's, it's it's, oh, it's, it's a little bit more expensive there. May or may not be some price gouging going on there, especially during the TFC stuff. Oh my god, the great bar though. Hey, here's a bag of fries for twenty two fifty. A bag of fries? That's what they'll get. They give you a for bag. 20. It's not to get a basket and a nice plate of fries is like fifty four dollars. This is what I'm talking about. We'll we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't, I like that about you. I think that's part of what's made you successful. Steve Dangle, you'll never make it. We'll see about that. CBC. Yeah, you got to wear. You, at some point, you got to wear a tie. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, you uh, might have to have a boss one day. Uh, maybe. Uh, not a fan. No. Not a fan. <laughs> I think you very much have a boss right now. Oh, I certainly do. <laughs> I certainly do. A couple housekeeping things before we get to the uh, the Leafs last night. First things first, I want to say, hashtag Road to the Cup, Panago Pizza. We actually made the order for the uh, the Road to the Cup special. So it's, it was wings, two pizzas, and cheesy bread. Mm-hmm. And as much as I've always... Bunch of dips. A couple, bunch of dips. That's right. We did that this weekend when we were uh, we're watching the, the Habs game and shouting out Philo Lorette uh, on... Uh, uh, on on video, which was a cool guy. He yeah. just picked the worst game to do that. <laughs> he could have picked literally 15 games before that where he would have won. Yeah, um, consecutive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, it's delicious, and we highly recommend you try it. What was the second? Jesse, you got a Hawaiian? And, and then what was the like, other pizza you got? Like ground beef Mediterranean I think it was, or something? I think it's the... Is it the classic Panago? I'll look it up. I don't know. It was so really good. It had like an Ashley show. Oh, it was so good. It was, it was it unreal. Like ground really beef and stuff good on it. Anyway, it was like it starts at forty three bucks. You can upgrade from there, but it's perfect for you know hanging out with people. What it costs us each fifteen bucks. It's nothing. So yeah. Anyway, um, also typing in my email. I can't <laughs> have anywhere near the camera. That's not suspicious. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Uh, <laughs> also, winners of the Bab Sox Movember contest. Uh, Phil Westlake won at Reed Shell. Uh, at underscore Nicholas, at Spence Holloway, at Chad Dorger, at Amon Macro, at Wonderlust Megan, at Clive Stillman, at Nero XLIV. I guess he was a Roman emperor once. Uh, at V <laughs> underscore LaMonica, at I Breed by Spores, at Jumpin' J- Jumpin Zach Flash, at Dilsey, at Philip Hockey underscore, at Dogfather85, at Jake and Bear, at Taylor C, uh, at underscore Nicholas, at underscore Nathan underscore Novak, and at 
Snep Stash. Anyway, all you guys. Oh, it's Snep Stash. That's that account that's Harold Snep's mustache. Oh. Yeah. Snep Stash. Well, Every time go. I see them in my mentions, I just kind of go, hey. You all hook <laughs> yourself up with beautiful uh, Mike Babsock's. Or, sorry, Babsock's uh, Movember campaign, which we uh, which we we didn't we took a little picture of in a uh, in a shoot last night. I gave Adam and Jesse their socks yesterday. Yeah, we finally got. <laughs> Is that what you were about to say? No, sorry. it was the beef Mediterranean. That's what we got. It's delicious. Everyone yeah. should eat it. So anyway, and uh, Jesse got it on a guess. He's like, I don't know. Oh this yeah, because I should eat another one. I was like, this one looks good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were correct. It was yeah. delicious. Yeah. Um, last night, the Leafs lose two to one in a shootout. Yep. So we get our first Batman loss of the year. <laughs> which yes. I'm still not upset about because we still got a point. First pity point. Which means points in... <laughs> loss. S- yeah. <laughs> points in seven See, of the no. last eight games. You lose in overtime. The shootout is some shit. Oh, no. We're not Wins having this and debate, losses, are we? people. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. But then you're waiting... Then you're making... In a way, you're making shootouts more important. No, not in a way. You're, you're making shootouts more important. No, and you- I just think that's trash. I think, is the, yeah, Adam, sorry, we shouldn't have this debate. No, let's not, let's, okay, not there. <laughs> let's not go there. I just. It's been done. Let's not have a theoretical debate about those stupid. Same for Senate. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so Leafs last night, they lose. Now, the first period was pretty bad, and they were lucky to go uh, to the dressing room, I think, 0-0. Zero, zero. However, let's throw this out there. At the end of the game, the Leafs had generated 44 shots on goal. And in terms of even strength shot attempts, 56 to 49. Yeah, so I I don't know too much about their uh, uh, shot generation numbers this season, but every time I look through the box score, whether the Leafs have been outshot or not, it's usually fairly tight. Mm -hmm. But um, the other team has always blocked way more shots than the Leafs. So I feel like they are shooting the puck more than the numbers let on sometimes. Yeah, for sure. So that's why I always look at shot attempts. I think it's a better... It's a better idea of kind of how it all went because you know you hit the post, it's not a shot, right? At all. So at all, um, I think it counts as a miss. Yes, it does. So um, it seemed as though from like looking, kind of doing a scan through the numbers this morning, the Panthers. I mean, the Leafs played a good game. Panthers just played a little bit better, and they ended up winning in the shootout. And Nick Bukestad is probably one of the best shootout players ever. He was oh he's Barkov? like unbe- or, no Bar- Barkov you're, you're well Barkov sorry but Bukestad scored that last goal against yes. Freddie and he and Barkov at, scored two I think. he's got like a ridiculous record doesn't he Bukestad no I think, I think that I might think be Barkov, Barkov. Is it Barkov? Yeah, 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 you're thinking the other B star yeah, yeah. for the Panthers uh, uh, anyway yeah because someone posted a compilation of Barkov's on Twitter after last night's goal and it's unbelievable it's it, both goals were amazing yeah. um so I mean honestly there's not. <laughs> Roberto Luongo is still Roberto Luongo most of the time, and he's been like that all year. He's always been one of those goalies that revels in getting too many shots. Yeah, yeah. Ironically, Reimers is backup. <laughs> like, like you, the kiss of death uh, when playing James Reimer is getting more than 40 shots on him. <laughs> like, yeah, then he's just, I don't know what it is, but he just stops him. Um, God, I miss him. The bottom two lines, uh, specifically Martin and Komarov saw, and sorry, Martin Komarov, Sashnikov, especially towards the end of the game, uh, they were played pretty evenly for the first two periods, but by the third period, Komarov and Sash had kind of been stapled to the bench. I don't think Matt Martin played at all in the third period. He, uh, I think, was hurt. Oh, was he hurt? Yeah, he was hurt. Okay. I, so, I didn't see what happened. Um, basically, what we're supposedly supposed to expect by Friday, which when the Leafs play Carolina is... Uh, more tinkering. The lineup will not look the same. The reason they did it uh, last night with the, you know, Matt Martin with Marner and, and uh, Matthews, for instance, and, you know, Marlo uh, yep. and Marlo not with Kadri and Komarov is because they wanted to, they wanted to match Barkov and they didn't want to have, they don't want to deal with that, that ridiculous line. So, so the Leafs were concerned with having to deal with the center so what they did to combat that was they took out one of their centers and put Marlo there. Dominic Moore, you mean? Yeah. And Boy, they put a better center. Well, but <laughs> he's sure not did. supposed to be at, like, Babcock is so obviously thoroughly done with that whole Dominic Moore thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm interested to see where that heads for the rest of the season. I wonder if they make a trade. I wonder if they make a trade for a fourth-line center. Or if they talk to Patty, because, I mean... You head into the playoffs with your best lineup, right? Like, well, do, maybe, do we do we think 
Mike Babcock right now, if the playoffs started, if he had to win a game tomorrow, had to win a game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Patrick Marlowe's at center. And, and Dominic Moore's, Moore's not playing. Yeah, yeah. He's not. I think Patrick Marlowe, I think they that, that might be part of the plan now. But I still think that they're going to play Dominic Moore because of what I've said before, which, and Babcock has said this publicly, so I'm not guessing at this. He said, sports science, we don't want the guy doing this all year long. We don't want the 200-foot game on a 38-year-old body all year long. They do want him fresher for the playoffs if they can. Maybe that's why they're warming him up. Putting more in and out, though, because Moore's the same age. Or like one year younger or something yeah, but like that. Who cares if you burn more to the ground? As long yeah. as <laughs> yeah. once we're at game eighty three and the playoffs start, then you can sit in the press box and Marlo can play. Exactly. Maybe that's it. I think that's the idea Maybe for sure. It. Absolutely. Um, I mean it's it's fairly clear every time Patrick Marlowe plays center that the leaf center depth is ridiculous. Yep. Um, which I never thought I'd get to say. How great is that? Can I throw something out there that uh, no one is going to like, but I th- still think it's interesting? Heading into last night's game, I don't know who it is now, but heading into last night's game, uh, the Marley's leading scorer is Ben Smith. Oh, really? <laughs> yep. Is that a good or a bad thing? It's an AHL thing. I think it's thing. just a thing. He's, mm. He was always good at the AHL level. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so it's he an can, AHL thing. And there he can remain. Seth Griffith. <laughs> he should be on no. everyone's ben, first line. Listen, I think Ben Smith got a bad rap last year. Maybe some of it deserved, but I, I think they put him in a position where he couldn't succeed. Yeah, he was in a difficult spot to begin with, and then he like broke his finger and tried to play through it. And, yeah. Hey, you're supposed to be our face-off guy. They're all yeah, crinkle wrap hand. I think, but I think he's a good teammate, and I think he's obviously played well down there, so why not? You get valuable guys at the AHL level. Now, um, what? Uh, here's what Babcock had to say about stuff. He said, what we found, and we did it Saturday in Montreal, and no one really noticed— what we did in Montreal is when they were jumping uh, one of our lines, we didn't let them jump it anymore just because we had too many centers and they couldn't jump it. Meaning that they can't run your bench if you've got four solid centers. Which he doesn't qualify more as one. <laughs> did Moore play Saturday? I missed that. I can't he think. He did. He did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a few games since I wonder, though, if they made an adjustment. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. That we missed in the third period that, like... Moore wasn't playing as much or was playing a wing or... Well, in the third period is when we saw the the triple M line. Right, right that's yeah. when the blender yeah. started to come out. Yeah. One of the triple M lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, there's two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, I think it's very interesting to watch and it's kind of interesting to see, you know, Matthews and Marner together. They looked good. Uh, oh, they had 12 shots between them. I mean, yeah, and I mean, that... The game's over had Matthews not rung one off the crossbar, right? It's over. Or had been hauled down. So, yeah, I was going to ask about that. What did you guys think of that overtime? Matthews is sort of away on a breakaway. The guy doesn't make contact with the puck, and I forget who the defenseman, or was it a Me forward? too, I forget. Um, there is a lot being made of the fact that he took Matthews out at the legs. Well, you see the play. You see the play happen, and it's your instinct as a Leaf fan to go, blah, blah, blah. and then the first thing, the first gift I saw of it was Flinter. Um, who is a must-follow account, F-L-I-N-T-O-R. And uh, in the s- close-up slow-mo, uh, the contact is first made with Matthews and his skate before the puck. The first time I watched it in real time, or I guess the second time, the replay, ah, I don't blame the ref, man. I don't either. I don't blame the ref for making that call. It looks... We're not like making a- the call. Yeah, sorry. It looks like a brilliant move in real time. Uh, that It's just a terrible break. That one is a bad break. I wonder about that one. If Matthews hangs on to possession in that play, let's say he gets knocked over and hangs on to possession, do they make a different call? And Jesse Storm has to replay. Like, I think like, if he holds on to possession somehow, they make a different call. And well, that's not on him. On, if he holds on to possession, then the puck was probably never touched, right? So, mm-hmm. like, yeah. of course... Yeah, uh, I just here he comes, here he comes. Ah, God! It just looks like such a good move. It looks like such a good move. I don't blame him. It's a split second. Yeah, you know, I can't get upset about that. Much. I can't because if it happened on my time, my well, side, I'd be like, well, you know, people, what, he's just making a good defensive play. I saw people calling for a penalty shot. I'm not sure about that because he does have a clear path to the net, it's but there's a also a panther. Yeah, there's a panther defender right beside him. Yeah, I so, so I don't know how that works. Tripping penalty would have been nice. Ah. Ah. Also, I... I, I'm not mad. No. One thing I am a little... Not about that one. One thing I think maybe the Kadri thing at the end. I'm just going to say, Kadri, I know he takes his lumps, 
And I was saying to this to uh, Jesse, I'm not sure if, I, if you were there for when I said it, but I know I said it to Steve. Kadri's having, he's on pace for 40 goals, right? On a career high eight game point streak. And just consistent. If Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews or Sidney Crosby's on an eight game point streak, that's a big deal. But Nazem Kadri's on an eight game point streak, not a big deal. He's like almost an afterthought on this team. Well, and I, I I wonder if he's barely on any of the posts. I wonder if part of it is that people legitimately like they. I mean, outside of Toronto, they hate him, and that's oh, good. Yeah, and that's it's the Brad Marchand effect, right? You hate yeah. him, but you love him to play for you. And of course, I wonder if some of it's that. And you know, last night I know he takes his lumps, but you got to suck that up, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got to just suck it up. And take it. We talked about this two games ago. Two games ago, this guy sees the red mist. And he came out on top in that one. He came out on top. But uh, I'd be curious to know who watched that play. And we saw at the beginning of last year, the word was out on Nazem Kadri. The guy couldn't buy a call. Um, gets nailed twice, gets up and retaliates, gets the only penalty. Ugh. That one was brutal. That one to me was far more egregious than the uh, Matthews Don call. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I don't know how you don't send them both. And even if it's a situation where you send them both, Kadri has to know better. Kadri has to know better. Like you're on the power play. Worst case scenario is you lose possession of the puck. They take it back the other way. But you have even numbers because you're on the power play anyway. Mm-hmm. But it's stuff like that. You know, if he, it, I don't know what happened to this Kadri for Selkie stuff but that he wanted. That he wanted to make a push for. Uh, listen, I know that you you were a part of that. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Ka- listen, Kadri said he wanted to win the Selkie. You want to win the Selkie, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's. It's funny. I thought progress was linear. Like, when it when it came to hockey. I thought nah. it was, they start at 18 or 19 years old. You mean and, they start at 82, and then they go up to 85, and maybe next season they're 89. Exactly, and that's how it works. <laughs> it's it's a little, with a team this young, it's a little stifled. Sure. Because at the beginning of the season, they were like a junior hockey team again. Like, just nonstop offense. Defense is bullshit. <laughs> no one likes it. What's a goalie? Yeah. What's back checking? All chicken nuggets, no vegetables. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> Just uh, can I have my can I have my burger sans tomato or salad? Mm-hmm. Can I just have? I just want ketchup, please. Just ketchup. Instead of the BLT, can I just have the B, please? Can I go to Scotland? They will give you a bacon sandwich. Aren't you sandwich a little there. disappointed in Kadri though? Because he's twenty seven now and he's been here uh, for. Ah man, he plays with an edge. Yeah, for yes. seven years. Yes, I think now or it's, eight years now, and he should know better. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. But I also understand that he takes his lumps and you get frustrated sometimes. And maybe you're, I, who knows? Who knows what leads you to do that? He doesn't, he does, he's done it the last couple games because Montreal, he did it in Montreal too. Yep. But you know, and he knows forever. He knows this morning that taking a penalty like that in the last minute of the game is a freaking horrible idea. Mm-hmm. And this he's is, heard about it. This I don't Mike expect Babcock's this to continue. Challenge. This is Mike Babcock's challenge, right? Like, I also think when Babcock. I think the more difficult part for Babcock when he inherited the Leafs was not um, developing the rookie, uh, rookies. It was reclaiming the veterans, mm-hmm. which kind of included, well, it definitely included Naz, but it kind of included Riley as well. And Crowley, uh, Riley has been an incredible project. Holy smokes, did he look good and has looked good. Um, Naz Babcock deserves a ton of credit for as well. It's like there's one blemish in his game, like one true blemish. No one's perfect, but and that's the red mist. Like for a guy who is so good at getting the other team off their game, it's just too easy to get him off his. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that takes, sometimes in life, it takes a, mis- a dumbass mistake like that to go, you know, I better, I better clean this up. And I bet you this is, a, is that's the pivot point. That's what I said at the end of this video, is the Leafs have won a lot of games this season that they didn't deserve to, and this is finally one that they lost that they probably should have won. And those ones bug you, and I think are the ones that uh, facilitate change the most. So I, I, I don't know. It was a good, yucky dose of medicine for the team, and maybe for Nas too. I get the sense that Jesse's a little disappointed. I am. Jesse, dad. 
Yeah, like when <laughs> what, what's what's at the root of this disappointment? Um, one thing, mainstream like the people not hardcore sports fans are making a big deal about today is Kadri hitting the, oh, yes. the official in the box. Oh. Yeah, by mistake. <laughs> by mistake. But that was by mistake. I, yeah. Radulov did the exact same thing in the KHL a few years ago. Yeah. Whacked the guy. And it wasn't even an off-ice official. It was one of his own coaches. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the people the people are hated on Naz, and I'm like, I'm disappointed that Kadri is still doing things that receive this much negative attention. I would have hoped he would have learned by now. So you're more you're disappointed in Naz, not the negative attention. Both, I guess. Because mm-hmm. you know what it is for me is we've had to defend Naz for years, and it mm-hmm. started with the Kadri versus Bozak stuff under the Carlisle regime. And I would cheer, cheer, cheer for Naz. Every bad, or sorry, every good thing he did, I would point out. Every bad thing Bozak did, I would point out. It wasn't the most fair thing in the world. But when he does things that are clearly bad, it makes me feel. Not just disappointed, but it makes me feel stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, that's <laughs> supposed to be, like, my boy. Like, that's supposed to be, yeah, go Naz. And you can't get it together. What am I supposed so to do? Long. What am I supposed to do? Defend that? <laughs> yeah. Well, why didn't Riff make the call? I don't think we're talking about it that much, A, if he doesn't hit the off ice official, yeah. and um, B, if that's in, like, the first or second period. But it's in the final minute or final 90 seconds of a tie game that you tied yep. five minutes ago. Uh, it's it's indefensible. And again, you – it's like the discussion we had about when is it too early. Like By the way, today is officially the cutoff for too early in the NHL. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to our American friends. Um, but uh, I look at Riley and I go – Boy, you're really pushing it with the two young stuff. Like, what is he, 23 or 24 now? He's played 300 games, hasn't he? Yeah, no, too old. Too old for too young. Kadri's well past that. Yeah. That guy was drafted eight years ago. Like I said, he's 27. He should know better. But I also feel like this is the first Leafs coach he's, like, truly believed in and listened to. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, given the past, I don't blame him. No, me neither. But, like... um, like, a, a few media members made a compelling point that I still don't truly believe in. I saw where the Leafs were going with it, though. Remember when they extended Carlisle and we all lost our minds? We were Two like, years. is this team drunk? What the yeah. hell is their problem? And, and it was fi- Shanahan! And then they fired him six months later. It was Shanahan! Yeah. Who did that? Um, the reason they did that was to prove to the team the coach is not completely... Uh, just to throw away. You can't just mope and pout until the coach is fired. Yeah. You actually have to stick it out and figure it out under this guy. I still think there might have been an element of that with some of the players on the team, Naz maybe being one of them. But then when they bring in Babcock for eight years, like that contract was a statement to a lot more than the city of Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Who's the players? Get it together under Babcock or get the hell off this team. And yeah. in some cases, Get out of this league. So Kadri is really <laughs> in his, he's at the beginning of his third real NHL season, if that makes sense. <laughs> and what's interesting too is that even when Kadri's contract expires, if all things remain the same, Babcock will still have another year. Yeah, he's going to outlast wow. everybody on that team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think Matthews, Marner, Nylander might be the only guys still around. Yeah. Nylander might be the first contract signed that goes beyond Babcock's. And who's to say that Babcock doesn't stay, right? Mm-hmm. He's not an old man. Mm-hmm. I still love his press conference. Yeah, well, you know, I got eight years here, and then they're going to be so good, I'll stick around for two more, and then uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, the, like, <laughs> love it. It's, it's, love a weird, it. it's a weird NHL thing that head coaches have been so disposable and flicked around, but, like, I look at the Steelers. Different sport, but they have had four coaches, I think, in history. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's an NHL thing. I think it's across sports. You see those outliers like the Steelers and like Popovich and San Antonio. Yeah. And, but the rest of the sports is, hey, we need somebody to blame. Let's fire the coach. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think it takes strong management mm-hmm. to ignore that. When you have a great coach like a Popovich, like mm-hmm. how great he is, um, you know, how great Tomlin was, how great Coach Cower was. Um, and, and I think that Mike Babcock is the first great coach and I, with no disrespect to Pat Quinn, Pat Burns, 
I think I think Pat Quinn Pat Quinn was a great facilitator and great motivator of great players. But you had to have great players for Pat Quinn to win. I think. Yeah. Also, this Pat is the anniversary Burns, of his death. Yes, and we love it. love yeah. Pat. Oh, yeah. But I think if you were to look at X's and O's, I think Pat Burns was the last truly great coach. Coach X's and O's coach. Hmm. The Leafs might have had. Um, and Paul Maurice. And I don't. Again, I'm not trying to to take away from anybody. I just think that Pat Burns was great. Pat Quinn was great for other reasons. He still corralled teams. He got got to a couple conference finals. Um, and I think Mike Babcock is probably one of the best coaches they've ever had. Ever. Um, He's definitely got the, one of the tougher jobs of any coach. For sure. But he gets paid ever like come it on too. Board. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. I certainly don't feel bad for him. <laughs> I, I, I want to get back to Kadri, though, because I feel like I feel like we've touched on something. He Because he's such an interesting figure in the fan base. Can we, can we just say he's a hothead? Like, that, that's fair. Oh, he's definitely a hothead. Okay. But I want to talk about, I mean, that's okay. There's lots, I'm a hothead. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, but I don't, I expect somebody in that position. It's not that hard. <laughs> not yet. I expect somebody in that position, your second line center on a hopefully Stanley Cup contending team in next year, whatever, to be able to control his emotions better and not take the dumbest of penalties. I agree. And I will say this, get it out of the way now. But he should have got it out of the way eight years ago. I agree. But if it's not out of your system yet, okay, fine. Get rid of it in November. Okay. Uh, It's disappointing. But one thing I've noticed, I've criticized Kadri maybe, I think, uh, twice this season. (laughs) Two or three times. Mm -hmm. And every single time I get screamed at. Screamed at by? Everybody. Well, the last time was the the Darcy. It was the the uh, the Lupal stuff, right? Oh, thank you. I forgot what <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, that happened People this year. hated that I pointed out a very obvious misstep that he made. Hated it. And it and, goes oh, back to I, what no, I was saying, though. They, I, we were called immature. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. How immature of us to point out that that was bad. And you know what? I don't care. I know it was bad. I don't need your opinion or, or approval on it. I know it was bad. One no, piece. but you guys, this is sports. You yeah. shouldn't be talking about Instagram yeah. You should comments. be talking about Instagram. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, ESPN spends every day talking about LeBron James and Kevin Durant's Instagram. And they're ESPN. <laughs> I'm still a hothead, but one thing I've gotten better at in the last few years is ignoring obviously stupid rebuttals. Yeah. <laughs> why, why fight that? I'm like, okay. Um, no, but it goes back to what I was saying. This is like over half a decade now where we've just been Team Naz. Like, he just represented something. Yeah. He was pre-Matthews Hope mm-hmm. is what he was. Does that make sense? A pick they didn't trade. It's a miracle he's a Toronto <laughs> Maple Leaf. <laughs> How you say it all the time. on yeah. earth is Naz and Kadri a Toronto Maple Leaf? Let's say the Leafs do the thing over the next half decade at some point. He's the second one. I I just want to see him hoist the cup. He, I just he gets want, a second, 100%. He I want to see second. him hoist the cup so bad. Well, but you got to be able to criticize Morgan the Riley? guy when he does no, things that Kadri, are dumb. Kadri gets a second. Depends that who's is on the really team. Inter- no, yeah. I'd be an old guy. Because JVR no, made the, JVR was Kadri is the old guy. On the team, no, team's top 100. Not old enough guy. Okay, okay. Who get who gets a second then, Adam? I, I, I think, well, so JVR was 100th on the team's top 100 players all time. Morgan Riley. I mean, because... Because uh, our boy Austin has got to get it. He's the captain, so Polak? he gets it first. I bet it's Polak. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, he's playing. No, 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 no. <laughs> The obvious answer. I swear to God, they should give back the cup if they get uh, give to Polak. The second. obvious answer is Marlo. <laughs> to me, yeah. Who hands it uh, oh. to Mike Babcock. Marlo hands it off to. No, the coach gets it like way down the line. <laughs> it's Matthews because he's the captain. Marlo, for sure. Yeah. Hands it off to Marlo, yeah. who hands it off to. Tyler Bozak. Longest what? tenured Leaf, I think. No, yeah. He's he was okay. he signed with the Leafs before mm-hmm. Naz played his first game, I think. I think he played his first Leaf game before Naz played that. his first. I'll be upset. I bet you, you. there will be so you. many if he's still, if he's <laughs> still stupid tweets Polak about that. Get oh. the damn cup before Kadri. No. Give back the Polak Stanley Cup. Polak can lift it first if they win. I don't no. care. Don't care. Don't care. Just win. Don't care. Just win. You know what? Care. You know what's gonna suck? gets a second. You know what's really gonna suck? Damn it. Is all the dumb tweets about the order in which the Stanley Cup is passed around? We will. We will be insufferable, Jesse. I will be that person. Be a leader, Jesse. We expect more from you. Whatever order, in, games. whatever order it's in will be the right one. I will I will That's say true. that. Whatever order it's in. But anyway. And Nassim they'll always Kadri, have the chance to do it again next year. 
Ah! Hey, there you go. <laughs> Nazem Kadri is a far more integral, uh, dug in, uh, nuanced part of Leafs culture than I think people realize. Yeah, especially now. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like he's he's almost more of a sacred cow than like. Like a, he's certainly more than like Nylander or Marner. Remember when people people were, criticize Nylander or Marner, and it's no problem. It's like Matthews and Kadri. Mm-hmm. There are some people who have no problem criticizing Kadri, yeah. and those are the same people who have been criticizing him for half a decade. I, That's the difference. I uh, I remember uh, I remember when Morgan Riley and Nazem Kadri signed those extensions, and people were like, "Twin." Well, Morgan's okay, but man, Naz, that's a lot of money for Naz. And I, th- I look at what it costs. What a wicked deal. What it costs what to get a, a second line deal. center now, mm-hmm. an effective second line center. Um, it's close to $6 million. Now, this is a free agent tomorrow. What does he get? Oh. $6 million. At Easy. Least. At, at least. least. At least, yeah. Six and a half through seven. Four and a half. And you got, and you got him signed through. You got him signed through his prime. That's robbery. crazy. Anyway. Riley at five starting to look pretty nice. Oh god, dude! Yes, yeah. I, he had it off year last year, and I still thought it was great. Still was okay, yeah. And five's looking pretty nice. He had what's called a growth year last year. Now, uh, on the next edition of Burke, actually, uh, no, I'm kidding. He didn't actually come back at us at something. But I do want to read something from the Athletic that that interviewed PK Subban before last night's game in Nashville, or at least they interviewed him and decided to run it before last ga- night's game with Nashville. Berkshire texted me last night. He goes, "You know, Subban just basically pulled up Rogers, Rogers, Rogers on air." He did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was like, "Sports that one, Rogers." Uh, woo! He's, he, uh, I, I th- what did he say? He was like, "Oh, it felt real good. Get the two points, Rogers. Wednesday night national yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, Roger, sports that." Yeah. And then he like walks off. Yeah, like, oh, he's so funny. And Kyle Bukakis, Bukakis is like, "Yes, yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that." Um, PK is the best man. He's so <laughs> wicked. I love that interview. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> you're the best." All right, so. Uh, The Athletic says, okay, so the other possible theory as to where things went wrong with you was when you went to arbitration in the summer of 2014. And this is about Subban leaving Montreal. Do you think that that was the beginning of the end of your time in Montreal? Subban says, I think the part about arbitration that probably makes the most sense is that it never had to happen. I think uh, it was 32 cases were, I think it was that 32 cases were filed. And I'm the only guy that goes after the year I had the playoff run with our team that we had and what I had accomplished in Montreal to that date, which, by the way, included a Norris Trophy. Didn't he make it to the Final Four that year? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Something like that? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think everybody would be in agreement that it didn't have to get to arbitration. A lot of people forget that negotiation was, in fact, uh, that the negotiation was, in fact, uh, a two-year negotiation because I signed a two-year deal. I wasn't a full two year. Sorry. It wasn't a full two years because it was a lockout year. So in 2013, I'd won the Norris. We uh, had all year to negotiate, and we didn't. We went to the summer to negotiate. We didn't. My final year, I don't know if we had much talks at all. There was nothing put across my table other than maybe something small in December, but nothing significant that I'd be looking at. The rest of the year, nothing happened, and the whole summer, not much happened. But enough about the Radulov uh, contract talks. Let's talk about Subban, Adam. I thought that's (laughs) what you were getting to. But enough about the Markov contract talks, Adam. (laughs) <laughs> I, th- I thought you were going to read us the Subban contract talks. Do you see a pattern? Wow. What do they hate against? What do they? What do they love so much about Alec Martinek? Uh, or no? Uh, oh, uh, Martinuk. Martinu- Martinuk. Wait, are you thinking of uh, Martinson? Martinson. No. Oh, and he's gone now. Oh, is he gone? Didn't they sign him to a longer term deal or something no, like that? They, oh, There's maybe. somebody else. They traded Martin, him Martin to. Martin. I don't remember who. It doesn't matter. For, I don't remember what. <laughs> Because it, well, all I know is they got rid of Sven Andrighetto, and he's been very good. What is the deal? These are your stars. Why do you not like your stars? Three strikes, you're out. Like, those are th- three swing and misses. Well, except, eh, at least you got Weber out of Subban. I, I guess. I guess. At what point do they realize that the problem isn't the players? Never. The problem is the management. Never. Never. Not Never. until the management goes. Never. No. Well, they haven't realized yet. Hmm. They haven't realized well, yet. Bergevin did just get an extension last year. I mean, I'm just saying. He signed till 2022. It's funny. Like, there are reasons to believe the Habs aren't as bad as they are. Price is going to get better and this, that, and the other. But all their weaknesses are still all the weaknesses that were pointed out in the summer. They lost two key free agents. The Subban contract negotiation, it sounds like, went down exactly the way I've described it in the past. 
Um, I saw one, I think it was from Matt Kane, who was basically, he laid out statistically after the Blues smacked the Oilers around 8-3. to three, He laid out statistically, he's like, look, here's why the Oilers are probably not that bad. And he convinced me. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised by that. I wouldn't be totally shocked by that, especially uh, when they get Sakara back, even though he shouldn't be sinking their whole season. It's They were still an extremely good score-adjusted uh, possession team. Cam Talbot's having, like, the worst season of his career. If he bounces back even a little bit, he should be okay. You know, this guy's shooting this percent, this guy's shooting that percent. Yeah, okay, Cam okay, Talbot's fine. average, this is a different conversation. I, yeah, I haven't seen too many arguments similarly made for the Habs. It's just not a great team. Also... Matt Kane, former pitcher of the uh, San Francisco Giants. Thanks for that. Actually? Yep. Retired uh, this year. He was very good. Thanks for that, Pierre. Yep. Went to, <laughs> went to St. Mary's for... <laughs> 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 Is that true? Matt Kane was, I don't know if it's, it's, it's definitely not the same not Matt I assume Kane. it's not. It's, I assume it is. Yeah. But <laughs> Matt Kane, former San Francisco Giants pitcher, okay. is also reporting on the Canadians. Let me look this up. I want to look this person up. <laughs> I don't know why he has so, such insight into hockey, but uh, good for Matt Kane for getting People a like different job. things. Yeah. Like, cool. Matt Kane's great. Yeah. Uh, did you see PK's <laughs> sick dangle last night? Uh, I did not. It was just obnoxious. He, yeah. un- it, like, I, it's almost like he's like, I don't, it, I forget the player he deked out, but he put it backwards through his feet. Like, he went through his feet backwards. Like one of those, wrap it around yourself yeah, and then yeah, put it yeah, up yeah. to yourself. Um, and it's like, man, this guy has a family to feed. Don't embarrass him. <laughs> like, come on. It was so bad. It was so insane. And I think Kyle Torres put it home. It was an, he was great. Buddy, if we're going to talk about great plays from last night, John Tavares. <sighs> Holy probably shit. Ooh, yeah. Can you bring up a yes. Yes. I want to look at that again. Yeah. I saw it once of this all morning. time. That is, and by the way, the guy who he just, Ruined the life of was Sean Couturier. Who? Sean Couturier. He's a pretty good player. Yeah, he's a player. A good player. Yeah, no, he uh, he is a good player, and John Tavares is a great player. That is the difference. You know what that reminded me of a little bit? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was different in terms of the moves he used. Oh. Yeah, here it is. Jesse's bringing it up right here. A solid cross check. Like, was that even called? Was that even called? Oh, it's loading slowly. What this reminds me of is when Crosby dusted Spezza, when Spezza was still pretty damn good. It's like, okay, here's the difference between good and great right here. Sean Couturier is good. Mm -hmm. John Tavares is freaking great. And you want to talk about an assist being worth more than a goal there. Josh Bailey is like, and I helped. Yeah, just cross-check into the boards. Doesn't give up on a play. Like, Babcock should be showing all the Leafs this freaking play. That's the kind and of thing. That does is he go effort. through his legs here? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> through his legs stupid. one-handed. <laughs> oh, so ridiculous. Gross. That's why I love hockey. So oh, gross. Stuff like that. That was so great. Effort. One more I, time. That's oh. the difference between, I mean, you... The through his legs with one hand. Uh, uh, oh, uh, God. Uh, <laughs> you, could, you could even argue that Sean Couturier is great. Uh... But regardless of whatever Sean Couturier is, Tavares is better. And we we got to invent a new category. <laughs> Nick Letty standing Legend. there watching, just like, uh, Icon. should I do something? Yeah. <laughs> Nick Letty's just and the I player. helped. Um, um, <laughs> and I helped. No, uh, there was a play, it was on the Leafs' only goal mm-hmm. last night, where I think it was Riley sends a pass to Marlowe, and it wasn't the greatest, and Marlowe didn't receive it the greatest, and there was a Florida player right there. And then there was a loose puck right in front of Marlowe. The Panther defender, I don't remember who it was, attacked because they see a winnable puck. Mm-hmm. Marla could have just let him have it, but he made that little extra effort to poke it forward. And because he did that, the Panthers defender was caught flat-footed. Connor Brown was flying the other way. Leafs have a two-on-one, and they finish it off. Those little plays, that little shitty secondary assist Marlo got, I think is what separates good teams from great teams. What separates teams that get eliminated from championship teams. Well, Melo doesn't have a cup, so blue. Oh, I heard he I was a choke it. artist, Steve. Yeah. Sorry, here's the, here's the stat from San Jose Matt fans will laugh at that one. In uh, slightly hieroglyphics. Gutless is what I've heard. Gutless. So, Thanks, heading, Jeremy Roenick. This was, uh, oh, shut up, JR. The Oilers are a top five team in adjusted Corsi 4 percentage. Uh, 
PPCF60. I guess that's power play, Corsi 4 per 60. Grass. Penalty kill, Corsi against per 60. Cam Talbot's penalty kill save percentage is, I think it's more than 6% below his career average. I'm not really sure this is a bad team. So basically, yeah, but like, they have a good a power play. They have a be- uh, Sorry, they have a good power play. They have a good penalty kill. Uh, they're good at possession. Their goalie hasn't been very good. There are reasons to believe that they will turn it around. But, but you're second last in the West. You're second last in the West. <laughs> and also, we've already reached too early day. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's too late to turn around. Watch, they're gonna get hot in the final, like, the, and they're gonna have this comeback, and then all everybody's gonna talk about is the Oilers are gonna be rolling into the playoffs. I bet it's gonna happen. Oilers, That's also a good thing. <laughs> Oilers are an incredibly yeah. interesting story because it is there's the odds are stacked against them in terms of a comeback, but it's doable. They have the talent, and there was an article written recently about the Jets. Maybe, uh, maybe. Coming back to Earth? Uh, coming back to Earth. All I know is right now, they're a third. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, who wrote the article? How do you screw that up? Oh, I can't remember who. I can't remember who. And it you was know, centered around what, Blake Wheeler. What which outlet sucks he's wrote in, the article? I don't remember. So there was an outlet, and you can't remember who wrote Buddy, it or where you wrote it. All I wanted to do was say that little thing. <laughs> And you're like, what? What do people want to Google that? that deep into this. this. <laughs> the reason I didn't mention the specifics, Adam, is because I didn't know them. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Go ahead and knock some more shit over. Hey, hey, I think golf claps for one Steve Dangle who made it onto Elliot Friedman's 31 Thoughts. I felt very good about tell that. Tell us about what, uh, tell us about the Andrew Hammond thing that made it. Because we it was Steve- Craig Anderson. No, Andrew Hammond. Oh, okay. No, Craig Anderson was Hammond's backup for a while. Mm. Yes. No, uh, uh, <laughs> No, I had asked you on Saturday if it was Craig Anderson. Oh, really? And yeah. what did I say? You said no, it was Andrew. So oh, I was okay. Just referencing our Saturday. Oh, I don't, it's good I don't that, recall. It's good that. that you guys are having an inside conversation here on this radio show Whatever. for everybody. Anyway, just trying to what? invite everybody else to the inside. Ah, what, what else? I guess we're going to keep up our walled gardens. What, what else do you want to talk about? I don't know. How's hmm? your, how was your day? How was your morning? It wasn't bad. My coffee really took this morning. Yeah? Yeah. You know how sometimes it like fails you? What number coffee is this? This is only number two. Oh, okay. I'll probably keep it to that. But did the number one lead to a number two? <gasps> no, I think I got that out of the way first. Uh, Before the coffee? No, Coffee's you're right. Usually- no, you're right. It was after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The coffee did it. So anyway, mm. uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. Andrew Hammond! <laughs> Adam's like, so tell us, you got into 31 Thoughts, one of the most prestigious things you can get into in all of hockey media, and Jesse and I are talking well, we about We were on the phone. 30 seconds later. We're on the phone talking about a business thing, and Steve's like, hey, I just got a text from Elliot Friedman. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, can I, can can I call you, you back? Can I call you back? I, you go handle that. Uh, I, need you to, I need to talk. I'm like, go. Oh. And then so it turned out to be this, which is so cool. Yeah, he uh, asked me if there was anything like noteworthy in the Hammond thing that I wrote, and I told him, yeah. So I got to talk to Hammond uh, about a week ago or so, and the article was scheduled to go up like tw- in 20 minutes, and then it's announced that the Colorado Avalanche had recalled him from the Belleville Senators. So when he got traded to the Avalanche in the Matt Duchesne trade, he was loaned to the team he was already with, so he didn't have to go anywhere. So I saw an opportunity to interview him, and uh, I wanted to ask him about the trade and the lead up to the trade and if he had heard anything and conversations he had had and honestly it wasn't all that juicy like it wasn't it wasn't very good um i mean he was open and honest and everything but i mean it just didn't sound like there was a whole lot there but when he was talking about his health like he he was talking like he was trying to sell me on it you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i'm healthy i'm really good i'm as good as i've been And one thing I noticed when I was transcribing the interview is he got more and more difficult to transcribe as the interview went on because he started talking faster because we started talking about his health and recovery. So he got more excited. He was genuinely harder to, to jot down, but he, the, the, I think the note that Friedman ended up using was Hammond said he was playing without a knee brace for the first time since college. He hasn't played a college game since, I think, 2013. And the Hamburglar run was in 2015, I think. So this guy's been playing busted up for a long time. And his his problem is far more severe than the one I had in my back, but I I could relate to him, and that's kind of how our conversation got going. Because he had 
several major ailments all in the same area, and he didn't know what was causing what. He just thought all those things were banged up. So what it ended up being was a torn labrum in his right hip, which was affecting his right knee and also affecting his back. And I can relate to all that, right? I was saying I had back problems, and then I discovered when I was 27 that the problem was actually in my legs. And whenever I stretch those things, stretch out the hamstring, stretch out the IT band on the side of your leg, lay on a ball on your hip, it, it loosens all those things. And it's like, you know those Robaxa set commercials where the little wooden toy starts mm-hmm. to stand up straight? Ah, that's exactly what it feels like when I do all those things. Only not with pills. Yeah, exactly. So he had a much more severe version of that, and he said there were all these non-surgical treatments he can do. But he just hit a breaking point last year where, like, his numbers were trash, like, even in the American Hockey League. And he was like, I just, I can't run from this anymore. I got to have surgery. So he had surgery. He's come back. His AHL numbers are good. I think he's had, like, one or one or two bad games. But other than that, his numbers were, were very good. And he got super energized when talking about it. And Simeon Verlamov was sick. So uh, they called Hammond up to back up Jonathan Bernier. Um. I want to start by saying Elliot Friedman said this at the top of his blog. Mm. He said, I've been in solitary confinement with a brutal virus and I've got no voice to interview anyone. Uh, oh, shoot. I'm gutted. Uh, I'm gutted this out like, I'm sorry, I've gutted this out like Michael Jordan in the flu game. So if this week's blog is worse than normal, blame it on that. You made it on the blog that <laughs> is worse than normal. Wow. So. It's a ringing endorsement. Thanks, Fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he was scraping. He was really scraping then. Oh, I got a call to angle. Give uh, me yeah, some. Seriously, it wasn't even me going, please let me in. It was him going, oh boy, I'm desperate. And here, wait, I'll, I'll even read the text. Just giving you help, man. No, no, I got to read the text. No, because you might be onto something, detective. He sent out an SOS because he couldn't fill 31 thoughts so, because so, he was dying. Yes, what was the exact quote again, Adam? Um, I've gutted this out like Michael Jordan in the flu game. So if this week's blog is worse than normal, blame it on that. He's got a brutal virus. If this week's blog is worse than normal. So here's the text. I'm looking for a last note this week. Anything from your Hammond conversation? (laughs) So I was his last ditch flu effort. (laughs) I've talked. Man, that's a flushing noise. You're the hail mary at the end of the game. Wow. I'm hey, the... hey, but but you Odell Beckham caught that ball, man. Yeah. Right. You know what? You I one am? hand grab pulled that in. I'm that episode of that '70s show where they figured out it was Kitty's birthday, like deep into the night of her birthday, and so they went to the gas station and caught her like a funnel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the funnel. <laughs> hey, got you a birthday present. Because <laughs> we know how you like. Filling things. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm going to try five times harder and be at 31 Thoughts all the time now. Because you guys. Whatever. Or whenever somebody needs a last ditch effort. You know? Shit. A <laughs> um, couple things from 30 Thoughts on the Toronto Maple Leafs. He said, just wanted to tie a final bow on something that's been uh, in this blog a couple of times. Other NHL teams have been told Toronto has a verbal commitment from Russian defenseman Igor Orzhiganov. Uh, he can sign April thir- after April 30th. Uh, I saw that note. And for some reason, the first thing that came to my mind was getting jiggy with it. That That's definitely going to be the headline. Wow. Apparently I he's really had a really a slow start in the KHL this year. A couple of people have said, I don't know, I don't see it. But you give him a shot, what the heck? Right? Well, I mean, you need right-handed defensemen. Right? Um, also, heading number 19 on the thing, I uh, was heading into last weekend. Ron Hainsey led the NHL in shorthanded time per night at 5.05. That would be the highest single-season number since Philadelphia's Darian Hatcher played 5.37 in 2006-2007. Yeah, the guy who... Ron Hainsey. The guy who bloodied up Crosby's mouth when he was already old and Crosby was a rookie. <laughs> Holy smokes. It, isn't it The nuts? guy who was like Ron Hainsey's age 15 years ago? Ron Hainsey. Has been unbelievable. You Absolutely know, fantastic. And you know what's great about him is you never notice him. Not really, no. The only time I notice him, it, okay, it was one of the first games of the season. Uh, Mrs. Dangle pointed out the tongues of his skates. Every time I see him, they bother me. Just, they're hanging out there? They're all they're super flimsy and they bother me. I don't know why. I just, I, I, I can't get past it. That's the, but that's the only thing I notice about him and I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. You've, you've brought up Igor uh, Ojiganov's. Uh, I, I, hockey, DB. hockey DB page. 
Yeah. Why? So uh, What's going on. Well, two years ago, he played 50 games, had 16 points as a right-handed defenseman. Last year, he had 22 points in 50 games as a right-handed defenseman. This year, he's played 25 games, zero goals, three assists. Hmm. He's That's, had a rough start. He has, but I mean, the Leafs seem to be well. And cool. uh, clearly, they're not getting him for scoring points because if he was supposed to be an elite point scorer, he's proven that he's not already. Uh, Yegor Korshkov was a guy who I think started slow and then had an injury. Uh, he's actually behind his point scoring pace from last year. Sorry, I'm just going through another Leaf prospect who was in the KHL. He's he's uh, f- behind his point pace from last year, but he's ahead of his goal pace. So I don't know what to really make of that. Mm. Just thought I would throw it in there. Um, Former second round pick. Elliot believes that Oliver Ekman Larson will most likely be re signed. And by the way, I didn't know this. Uh, his brother was brought to the AHL team by uh, the Coyotes, too. Mm, I think I forgot that. Yeah. So interesting. Um, and I mean, it sort of makes sense. Wouldn't you build your team around him? Isn't yeah. he your Eric Carlson? I was, I was going to say, you give him the Eric Stahl treatment. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll bring in Jared. <laughs> we'll do anything you want, whatever you need. Sure, Jamie, we'll bring in Jordy. I, I want to talk. And about, then Jordy ended up being okay. I want to talk about the league's worst media market, which is clearly Montreal. Thank you, thank you. I was about to yell at you if you said anything other than Montreal. Elliot said this, and the reason I'm bringing up what Elliot said is because I heard something too, and it was kind of disconcerting. Yeah, I'll just let you say it. Elliot said this: for the first time, I can see a situation where Carey Price gets traded. If someone walked up to you this second and claimed Price wanted out, could you blame him? I would protect my family at any cost. Now, I think this has to do with an unsubstantiated rumor that was talked about openly by a Montreal radio host. Was it... Which uh, is that his wife... You're done reading, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Rajon Trombley? Where did you end reading? Uh, At any cost. I would protect my family at any cost. That's that's Elliot. Sorry, Sorry, I should have... And (laughs) quote, (laughs) Elliot would protect his family at any cost in case anybody's unclear. Sorry about that. To me, so so this I think has to do with the unsubstantiated rumor about... I I don't know if it was... uh, Who was the guy you mentioned? Uh, Someone mentioned to me that it was Rajon Tremblay, but I don't know. And he was the the guy that traded Patrick Watt, wasn't he? No, that was Mario Tremblay. Mario Tremblay. Maybe this person's confused. It was someone in Montreal. Um... And I saw Connor McKenna, who's a, a friend of a friend of ours, who is a friend m- of the show. morning show guy in Montreal at a sports station at the other network, saying, listen, not every radio host in Montreal is like this. But I guess this guy said, well, it's probably not true. But I heard that his wife wants out and Carrie Price's wife actually had to go on Instagram and say, no, we love Montreal and we don't want to leave. Can you imagine? Oh. Like, and I think ter- the thing is, is that we're not immune to that here. One of the reporters called James Reimer's mom. I, well, I was just about to say that. But remember, that was like an uproar, though. But Brian McCabe. Remember when Brian Brian McCabe wants out? I remember when they were going to re-sign Brian McCabe, and they signed him to an onerous no-movement clause, $5.5 million, can't trade him, can't yeah. yeah. Um, when they signed him to that deal, the rumor was that his wife wanted out of town, or at least that was the one the, the radio stations well, were saying. That. I remember it very well. Oh, well, his, his wife's from Florida. She wants to be back in Florida. Or his wife's from the, from the island, wants to be back in the island. I don't think anybody knew where his wife was actually from. But, and I don't think it was true, but it was something that they talked about openly that I don't know you could get away with now. Well, and also, how long, exactly, how long ago was that? That was 10 years ago. And the Reimer thing was how long ago? Three or four, at least. At least three or four. Um, the, uh, there are certain media members... Uh, particularly in Montreal, particularly in the francophone media, we do need to say it if it's true. Mm-hmm. Don't give a fuck about your family. Yeah. Like they, they don't care. Yeah, you play for their Canadians, so therefore you're open season. They yeah. will say whatever, follow you wherever. Even the blogs are more vicious. They're, they have a blog that's like TMZ, but just for Canadians. Twenty five Stanley. Right, and they have I think what do they have thirty thousand followers or something like that? Uh, let me check. It's insane. Like they followed Steven Stamkos around the last time he was in town. Yeah, and uh, they were going 30, at it. 30,000 followers. They were going at it with Brian De, uh, Dubinsky. Brian Dubinsky? Brad Dubinsky? Jeff Dubinsky. How have I Matt. forgotten Dubinsky? Chad name? Dubinsky. John Smith. No, I know. Dubinsky, Brandon Dubinsky. Brandon, Jesus. I was waiting for you to get it, but I, I had to. <laughs> I, didn't, I just, my brain was just like, no, I only had enough room for the, the last name. Wow. Yeah. So, hey, uh, Steve. Yes. What's 48 divided by three? Ooh. Oh. Wait. I think it divides cleanly. Uh, 10, 33, 36, 39, 
42, 45, 48, 16. When was Zach Hyman drafted? Ooh. Shit. Um, fourth round. <laughs> so absurd. If you get... By Flor- Florida. By Florida for sure. 20. Ah. Eleven, I think twenty eleven. I'm going to say twenty eleven or twelve. Uh, twenty eleven. Zach Hyman was drafted in the fifth round ah! in twenty ten. Ah, <laughs> by Florida. Damn, damn. damn. You I got didn't the, do. You got the um, long dividing right though. Forty eight divided by three is sixteen. What? The, well, that's a weird change of fortune. Yeah. Anyways. Damn it. Brandon Dubinsky. Brandon Dubinsky. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, sorry, I forgot where we were. Chad uh, Dubinsky. <laughs> the, Chad Dubinsky, Brett. Uh, yeah, they don't they don't give a shit in Montreal. And and it's funny. People talk about not wanting to play in Toronto because of, of the media. Of various no. reasons. No. No. The taxes are higher in Quebec, and the media is so, so exponentially worse. So, so much worse. You're 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 not just a sports figure if you play for the Montreal Canadiens. You're something cultural. You're pop culture. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which is not the case here. No. Not really. We're not like, you could talk about, I feel like you could talk about the Montreal Canadiens and talk about the game last night on like a pop station mm-hmm. there. Yeah, like Music Plus or something like that. And you could totally, which is their pop, one of their pop stations. The Leafs are still energy. relegated to sports. Yeah, you're yeah. more into like who they're dating who they're married to? Yeah, this story they're, you they're heard. They're superstars. That story. Yeah, it's the same with their. It's the same with their radio hosts and their VJs. Like they still have like we much music and music plus in this country. Much music doesn't have VJs anymore. Music plus like you are a a you can't walk down the street. Like and their their radio DJs are enormously popular. Who wants to deal with that? Well, I mean, if you're in radio, you probably do. You're all right with it. Well, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you're if you're an athlete and you just want to play some hockey. And you're from like what? What is it? Anaheim Lake, Alberta, Flynn Flon, Manitoba, or, or wherever Carey Price is from. Like you don't want to deal with that, and you don't want to be answering questions and keep my fucking wife's name out of your mouth. Like it's a good thing Carey Price is a cool-headed guy. Y- you know what I mean? Oh, I probably would have t- told him the guy. I probably would have said something bad. Get, un- get under, get under someone nuts's. Uh, just say something about someone who's nuts his wife. <laughs> Okay, Carey Price is 31. Now? I think so. I believe Ooh. so. Oh, that contract. 30. 30. 30. 30. He'll be 31 in August then. Um, when the contract kicks in. Yeah, when the contract. So, if, say, you were to trade him off and restart the rebuild, it's not like if you tried to restart the rebuild right now, he would be in his prime when you'd be good enough anyways. So, is the smart thing to do is get the world right now and trade Carey Price. Is it the world? Yeah. He's he's Carey Price and he's number one goalie on any team. To me, it's almost like trying... $10 million, man. It's like trying to give someone the world's most impressive Redwood. Like, like impressive, the tree? Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, man, don't you want this? Well, yeah, but like, how the fuck... And how this, am I going to fit it? How are we, how are we going to transport it? No, how then you gonna... get somebody who knows about trees, and you get them to handle it. That's very like, expensive, though. How on earth? What does a Carey Price trade even look like? There was a house on the corner down the street, by the way, here, that was a, uh, a classic home, like one of those heritage-protected homes. Hmm. And you could have it for a dollar. But the one caveat, and this is in downtown Toronto, you could have this house for a dollar, is that you had to pick up the house and move it. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it was a heritage home. They didn't want to. They didn't want to knock it down yeah. by for yourself a, for a so, dollar. You could have it. So you couldn't have the land. You could just have the house. You just had to have the house. So you, <laughs> so had to you have a really <laughs> nice trailer without wheels. Um, that and so nobody took it. Wow, heritage home. They did knock it down. This will make a great YouTube video right here. So cut this part, Jesse. What does a carry price trade look like? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, let's start with who? Yeah, who needs a goalie forever? Forever. <laughs> who needs a goalie, who needs a goalie forever? Forever. Like, you know who I? You know who I think would? You know, you know who would do it? Who? If I'm 
Bear with me here. Oh, boy. If I can't re-sign Marc-Andre Fleury, why doesn't Vegas? <laughs> and think about this for just a no. second. They've got they now listen, I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> but as long as you don't give up one of those you don't give up those lottery protected picks, you've got a billion picks. If Montreal decides to rebuild. First of all, I'm Montreal. You bet your ass you're giving me one of those stupid picks, asshole. I'm giving what you if, Gary Price. What if you could get one of their prospects? What if you could get a cluster of defensemen that included Nate Schmidt? What if you? What could, if pigs can fly? Give me your pick. I mean, does Vegas have the assets? Fan. I don't know if they have the assets. Well, I think the lottery protected picks are, but I feel like you could. Oh, man, if I'm did Vegas, we find out that the lottery protected thing wasn't true? No, apparently it is. It is true. Apparently yeah. it is true. Yeah. Okay. You ask, did you ask someone? Uh, I've got, received several tweets about that. They're like, yes, they do have a lottery protected pick. Uh, I I think I found the answer. Just because they're the type of team who always does kooky things, and they have a historically bizarre relationship with the goaltenders. New York Islanders. The Philadelphia Flyers. The Philadelphia Islanders. Although, damn it, New York Islanders is a very good answer. Oh my god, Price for Halak! No. <laughs> Make it happen! Tavares. Straight up. For Price. <laughs> I don't think so, not a chance in hell, but... See, that's not a rebuild then. No, of course it isn't. I just thought it would be funny to say. Um, no, I think I think you got to you like Montreal has to decide we're rebuilding. If they are rebuilding, then Carey Price can't be your goaltender, can he? I think my tree analogy works perfectly. Where it's, do you fit this tree? Where? How do I? Yeah, sure. What? Don't you want it? No, of course I want it. But what? What am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do? It's that Dane Cook joke. Where Oprah is just like, everyone gets a school! <laughs> everyone gets a, a school district and a full faculty! <laughs> like, what, what, what am I gonna do with the school? <laughs> it's true. Like, what? It's cool, but like, what do I do? Yeah, what do I do with this? Uh, okay, wh- think about, okay, let's say you're Philadelphia and you're crazy. Sabres. You're Philadelphia, you're crazy. Buffalo. I can see Buffalo. <laughs> let's say you're Philadelphia, you're crazy. Your Islanders, you're crazy. Your Buffalo, you're crazy. Let's say those are the three teams. What does the package look like? Okay, what before we... I even get to that, and you guys are both going to scold me, and I'm willing to take this heat, how bad do I actually want Carey Price? The answer right now is not very much. Yeah, I mean, if they start, if they decide, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm not going to scold you on that. But based on his past history, you would think he would rebound. Uh, Okay. We're going to go ahead and look at Carey Price. So he's 30, going to turn 31 when this holy moly contract (laughs) kicks in for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years at 10.5 million. You better be the best version of Carey Price for at least five or six of those years. I think you're looking at this the wrong way, but go ahead, Jesse. The Edmonton Oilers. If you're sending back Cam Tablet. And you're taking on Carey Price. Talbot and Drysidel for Price. No, no. <laughs> I'm I. If I'm Edmonton, I I give up a uh, at least one first round pick. Oh my God, Bergevin wants Lucic. Oh, that'd be oh sweet. my God, we found it. Yo, Lucic in a Habs jersey. Someone photoshopped that without vomiting. Um, can I can I throw this out there? If I'm an NHL GM, I say to Mark Bergevin, listen, I don't I don't know if I like Carey Price at ten million. But I definitely like Carey Price at seven million. You do not retain salary on Carey Price no. when his contract has not even started. No, you don't do that. Can you imagine? <laughs> this is why Mark Bergevin can't be in he charge can't make a trade. Of, of no. You have to fire him no, today. But that's what I say to Mark Bergevin because even if I'm terrible, even if I'm the Sabers, he's so going down with this ship. Molson's not going to fire. It's going to be great. It's going to so, be great. I hope he stays on forever. Do the Islanders give up John Tavares? No, that doesn't make sense. No, no, I don't, no, really I don't think sense. so. No. I don't. I think they're going to re-sign him. I don't see how any like. I just yeah. don't see how the Islanders don't re-sign Tavares. I would be shocked. No, here's here's so what I'm talking about. So goalie? through 11 games, Price was an 8.77. Now that is not going to last, mm-hmm. and a lot of it had to do with his defense, and we know that. What we don't know is his injury status. This guy missed mm-hmm. so much freaking time. And tried to come back too early, and that's why he missed so much freaking time. Now he started the season wonky, tried to play through an injury. Now he's sitting again, or might be coming back. Was he injured the whole time? Like, 
So I'm about to invest in a 31-year-old for eight years, and there's a giant question mark about his health. 10.5 mil? I, I'm not biting. I was, you know what? I'm I, not, uh, you know what? Extremely high reward. I'm not taking the risk. I, I changed my mind. Nope. I like Carey Price at six and a half million. What he was making, what he's currently making? D- dude. That's not, and that's not an insult to him, but if I'm a, think of it if as you retain if, on Carey if you Price. are a general manager of, of the 30 other NHL teams, that is the first conversation you have is that, that salary. That's the first conversation you have. The move does not happen if Montreal doesn't retain. Because as as a smart general manager, which we all think we could be, you can't take on $10.5 million in one player. You can't. You you know you can't. You think the most full of themselves, uh, what's the word, hubristic team in in the entire league is going to retain salary on a contract that hasn't started left. Uh, I started yet, started don't yet. think they have a choice. You're out of your mind. Then they're gonna then they're gonna hang, hang on to him. I have another team. Yes. What about the Anaheim Ducks? And you send back John. Gibson. I thought about that. He's only 24. Dude, look at how John Gibson's playing, and he's a fraction of the price. Like this is the thing. Even if Carey Price, like let's say the rest of his career, and even this season, he bounces back, and he's a 920 goalie mm-hmm. forever and ever. Amen. He's still a ten and a half million dollar nine twenty goalie. What if I'm able to find a nine eighteen goalie, a nine seventeen goalie, which is what John Gibson is at very least yeah. for for what's Corey what Crawford? If, what's what Corey if Crawford? Carey Price is a nine twenty seven goalie, and he's otherworldly and best player in the world? You think he's going to? I. It's like the Weber thing. Weber's a fine player. He's a fine player. Good player, even. But the term. Yeah, it's the length of time. The term, like, it's... But you, it's, only, you only need him to just get one. You just need one cup. And then it's, it's all good. You can, you can waste away all the rest of the years in the contract because you got that one. If you think Carey Price can push you over to get one Stanley yourself, Cup, then you do it. You put yourself in the same position as the Habs are in now. Hey, we won the division last year. Uh, Freaking Shea Weber looked great. No, and but, now we're talking rebuild. But Montreal didn't win the cup. That's what I'm saying, Brooksy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take- Henrik Lundqvist? No. no, no. Oh boy, oh boy, boy, boy. Nope. Mm-mm. Not biting on that. So it's impossible. You can't trade him. Not I don't think biting. you can trade him. This is what again. Sure, I want this redwood, but look at the size of this thing. You've seen my yard. This isn't gonna fit. Mark my words, if a trade does happen, Montreal is retaining. Fold the team. Yeah. Fold, fold yeah. the team, move it to Quebec City. You can't, how, the I, contract this follows is the you, most man. ridiculous, you know how poorly this YouTube video is going to age? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is going to age so shitty when he wins the Vesna this year. Yeah, <laughs> like, true. <laughs> seriously. It's true. Hey, remember on American Thanksgiving when he was an 877 goalie? Remember when these idiots were talking about... 877? Yeah. Remember when we were talking about trading Carey Price 11 games into his season? Man, I'm just... I don't know. (sighs) You better rebound. Oh, boy. Uh, Mark Spector tweeted a couple nights ago. Mark Spector's been on a roll this year. Oh, is the Oilers media so fun? Yeah, it's the best. Mark Spector's my favorite now. So fun this year. He's hilarious. So he was... was Oilers media and fans. So fun. So he tweeted this. The Oilers just quit. Well, The Oilers just quit. 8-3 loss to St. Louis. Last night, they won in Detroit. Jesse, last night before that Oilers game even started, what did I say to you? Hi, Jesse. I'm Steve Dangle, and I'm writing a book, and I'm a good guy. And I'm a I have no great idea what you're guy. I, oh, I, I said it. the I Oilers. Heard yeah. Oh, you heard? <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to say? Sorry, Go. you were getting your pictures taken. I didn't want to bother you. Watch the Oilers win tonight. They won. And they won. You're Convincing. like, no, no. I think you said the Oilers are so going to win tonight, I think is what you said. And they did. They did. Now, Todd McClellan, uh, see, honestly, from everything that I saw, it seemed like they did it the right way. They, play, they played the way the Oilers can and should play. And Todd McClellan said, okay, now we just have to string this together for a couple nights. On the second half of a back-to-back. Amazing. Uh, one thing uh, that was mentioned in 31 Thoughts that has been mentioned since I think Nick Kiprios brought it up on in like like right before Halloween is is it looks like the Oilers really want to move Ryan Strom. 
that, and, and when Kiprios said it, it was a month ago. We think the season's, we're a quarter of the way in. We were a quarter, we were half of a quarter of the way in. Yeah. We're an eighth into the season. What kind of an idiot talks about trading a player after 11 games? Peter Shirelli. That's what kind. Thing is, who would take him? <laughs> Who's going to take that? I know he was the fifth overall pick, but at a certain point, it's like, okay, this guy is what he is. Also, whatever you get for Ryan Strom... is not going to be Jordan Eberle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you got for Jordan Eberle. Like, I, I can't wait to see the spin on this. Like, let's say they're able to get, like, a second and a fourth. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> let's say you're able to get a second and a fourth for Ryan Strom. You got a second and a fourth for Jordan Eberle. Yeah, but they got the cap space, too. Oh. So, so it's like you got Lucic, Bully Yarvi. <laughs> oh, that's right. Larson. <laughs> A second, a fourth, and six million dollars in cap space for Hall, for and, Hall and Everly. <laughs> it's just, oh boy, 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 boy. It's, it's funny. Two teams that are in a somewhat similar position in terms of you made your bed in the summer. Mm-hmm. Everybody warned you. Uh, now, um, we do know that as of the start of this show, one Eddie Lack was placed on waivers. So I wonder if the Oilers don't put in a claim for a guy like that. You know, he... No. Well, it's only been his last 58 games that have been really bad. But Wait, he... <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous to say. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I know well, why Adam... Say it again. I know why Adam brought that up here. Okay. Because go, go there's a tweet go about ahead. that. Yes. The point is, he started off quite well. And if you if you remember a guy named uh, Devin Dubnik got his game back when he switched play... Like, he switched... That is teams. once in a blue moon, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, sorry, this is from James Myrtle, so here's what Adam was referring to. Eddie Lack's first 82 games in the NHL, he was a 9-17 save percentage goalie. That is just Pretty below good. Freddie Anderson's career average. Uh, Eddie Lack's last 58 games, 8-9-8. Now, but think of where he's played. Bad Carolina. And he was in bad Carolina. Vancouver before that. <laughs> and he was with pretty good Calgary. Pretty damn good Calgary. Yeah, but, like, at some point, you got to... Be the good. He was the good in Vancouver when they were the bad. Oh, that sounds like he but had then three he got shots bad. at it. Yeah. yeah. Like, at what point do you just go, there isn't a good goalie here? Yeah. I think you give him one more shot. He already had three, though. I mean, Nancy Niemi found a team. Yeah, man. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's yeah. going well. <laughs> well, it's not he going won. well. Or no, he uh, got no, a point. He, he got he a pity point. Yeah. And a shootout loss. Great. Right. <laughs> or as Jesse just calls it, a loss. Um, I wonder if a team like Arizona or Vegas. Or, that was one of the things I tried to get Hammond to bite on. I'm Go like, have Vegas. you been looking around the league? And he's, he's just kind of like, no. Nah. And I'm like, really? Because Vegas has used five goalies already. <laughs> um, Trying to put that square peg in that round hole? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a uh, round peg in a round hole. That's and true. he was just pretending not to see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we talk about Brock Bowser for just a second? Brock Besser. Besser. Bowser. Brock, Brock so, Bowser. So Brock Bowser. <laughs> so Brock, Brock Dubinsky. Chad Brock Binsky. Brock Lesnar. Um, I, <laughs> there were some tweets I read yesterday that were so great. I have a Brock Lesnar thing after. Uh, that people were so upset. Canucks fans were so upset when this guy got drafted. So upset. They were? Oh, yeah, there's so many, like, all the Canucks read it, just went, fuck, 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 fuck. Really? Yeah, because nobody knew who he was. Oh. And, and again, because not everybody follows it as close. And I, I thought he was highly touted from day one. Maybe it's because he was a college guy. So what's amazing is now he might win, he might win the, the Calder. And if he doesn't, what I would be Calder shocked. What a Calder race. What it's a great. Calder race this year. It's fun. Uh, Clayton, uh, Clayton Keller. Clayton Keller, Brock Besser, and Matt Barzal. 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 You mean former Oiler? Oof. Matt Barzal? Could have been. Ah, but Griffin Reinhardt, though, right? Yep. Uh, he looked good. Oilers lacking the least, speed the, sorry, the, the Oilers, I think, weren't even going to take him, even if they had the pick. I think they were going to go with Emerson Eck, but even then, that would still be a pretty good pick. But, but Griffin Reinhardt. <laughs> uh, also of note, and I thought this was interesting, if your team is in a cap crunch, this is good news. 
Oh, well, here, sorry, before you get to that, okay, were you moving on from Brock Besser? I was moving on from Brock Besser. I just want to say he's fantastic, and it's amazing to watch. I just wanted to say that a lot of Canucks fans wanted me to point out that he has, I think he's tied with Austin Matthews in scoring. Oh! You know, people complain about the coverage that the Leafs get, but if national broadcasters talked about the Leafs and Austin Matthews as much as fans of other Canadian teams talked about the Leafs and Austin Matthews, they'd never be off the air. Oh, sends? Oh, what was it? What was oh, it? that's all I see. Was it Mark Stone? Oh, Somebody's Mark like, Stone oh, thing. Mark Stone is beating Austin. Well, he's played more games. Oh, there's a couple. But sends. hey, listen, why can't it just be, hey, Mark Stone's having a great year? Yeah. Like, he why is. is it get, let it be divorced from Austin Matthews. Like, why does that matter? Brock Besser is great. You know what I'm going to do? Compare him to the guy in Toronto. in Toronto who we play twice a year. Yeah. I mean, and hey, okay, let's have this conversation next week when the Leafs play the Canucks. I hope it's not relevant a, right now. I hope Leafs and Canucks fans, first off. Um, I can't nev- wait till that heated twice a year rivalry kicks off. Never civil with each other, but I, I definitely hope that it's somewhat like what last fall's game was, which is they hate each other and the hate comes back out. I hope it's more like the version that Jesse saw. The disappointing <laughs> version. Uh, <laughs> the re, the re, uh, one of the things I was also checking out, uh, or I saw uh, floating around is, Somebody thought um, on Canucks Reddit, they're like, uh, they call Good Branson Goody. Yep. So they're like, Goody's going to be great when he lands this knee lander. <laughs> You're not watching the games, are you? I, I, <laughs> I, I'm going to give them the credit that they'll, they were kidding. I don't think so. No? I don't think so. Well, the replies certainly weren't. They were like, yeah, it's a great idea. Well, I mean, if we can't get Ekman Larson with knee lander, we might as well go after Goody. <laughs> Um, Commissioner Gary Bettman, if you are, if your team is in a tough spot, this is great. Gary, Gary Bettman indicated that he thinks revenues will be between 4.5 and 5 billion this season. Oh yeah, I saw this. Assuming, this is from Elliot, the five, 4.5 billion holds. So that's the conservative estimate. Mm-hmm. The cap will be around $80 million next year. Dude, that's a $7 million increase. That's an Alexander Radulov on every other team. That means that players are just going to make more money. That's which is great. That's Patrick Marlowe and a rookie, on top of what the Leafs already have. If the cap goes up seven million dollars, people are going to spend obnoxiously in free agency. People are going to spend obnoxiously. I expect the Leafs to spend to the cap because they can absolutely afford it. Uh, does that completely change our estimates going into next season for guys like Komarov? Bozak and JVR. No, because it, it means that to. Nylander, Marner, and Matthews will want more. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe. maybe. They're going to want a greater percentage. I, if I'm an agent, I look at well, I look at Austin early? Matthews, and I, I here's how I if I'm Austin Matthews' agent, which hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Um, I go into next season going, I don't, I don't want to think about the number. I want to think about percentage of the cap. So we go in and go, like Connor McDavid is. What is he, 20% of the Oilers' cap? Give me that. Yeah, That's stop. like the fifth thing, <laughs> fifth time you knock that coffee cup over. 20% of the Oilers' cap, probably, right? Somewhere in that range. Yeah. If I'm Austin Matthews' agent, I go, Connor McDavid was 20% of the Oilers' cap. He is this percent of their offense. Austin Matthews is this percent of the Leafs' offense. Because you're going to use Connor McDavid, right? Why wouldn't you... What based on that percentage? Here's how I've come up with my number. You don't go number first. You go percentage. Glad first. you asked, Adam, because I love this city and I love this team, and I want to create a winner. So I'm gonna take six. <laughs> no times six. I'd be embarrassed. I'd be so embarrassed if that's what the Leafs were like. Yeah, we'll give you six million. No, that Matthews insists. Oh yes, six is all I need, and I want half of it to go to charity, and the other half to go to Zach Hyman. <laughs> piss people off because I think it'd be funny it, it's in Austin Matthews contract that Zach Hyman has to play with him yeah I, so uh, you can't take him off his way <laughs> so they never they never ended up putting Martin with Matthews and Marner I don't think but uh, when that lineup was announced they I was like well game? I uh, maybe a shift or two I'm trying to okay. remember but um, uh, just uh uh, when when the lineup was announced and they had Martin on that line instead of Hyman, I was like, well, for everyone who wanted Hyman off that line, congratulations. You got your wish. <laughs> you got Matt Martin. Yeah, careful what you wish for, Dick. <laughs> imagine, uh, you, imagine you told yourself that from two months ago. Like, okay. well, they are going to remove Matt Martin. Or, sorry, uh, Zach Hyman, but they're putting Matt Martin in there. 
you'd have been like, uh. Dude, that first goal that that line scored against Montreal, which was the 5 nothing goal. So, I mean, we're, we're talking a little bit of moved goal posts here. It started with a behind the back between the legs pass from Matt Martin. <laughs> It was unbelievable. Um, we are, though, seriously looking at the possibility of the Leafs missing Hyman for a game or two. Because he was taken out of the game by the concussion He was spotters. at practice today, though. Eh, concussion. Eh, he's full practice. Eh. Well, no, but I'm saying, like, it goes in waves, right? So you never know. Maybe tomorrow he wakes up and he's like, oh, I got a barf and I don't feel like playing. Um, if you had to change it all up and Hyman wasn't healthy, who would you put in his spot? My answer that I said in the video today was Connor Brown. Wait, which spot is Hyman playing in? On the first line, left wing. So you still have him on Matthews' line. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Adam. Leaf lines today. Oh, interesting note that you guys bring up Hyman because he is on the lines. Doesn't mean he'll play, but he is on the lines. Hyman, Matthews, Marner, Komarov, Kadri, Sashnikov. Okay. Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, Nylander. Still, yeah. Levo, Marlow. Brown. He hates more, dude. He cannot stand that player. Let's also throw this out there. What's that last line? Levo, Marlo, Brown. Who else is sitting? Oh, what? Oh, because Matt Martin left last game. Maybe he's hurt. Well, Jonas Siegel said that that, yeah, could Holy be that. Holy shit, what a line. <laughs> Jonas Siegel says Babcock confirms that Martin is healthy. He will be a healthy scratch. Probably tomorrow in Carolina. Did you add that little bit? Or does he say... Babcock he confirms Martin is healthy. Stands to be a healthy scratch Friday for the first time as a Leaf. And that is from Jonas Siegel. Wow, wow, wow. So the lines are, again... Hyman, Matthews, Marner. Yes. Komarov, Kadri, Soshnikov. The fucking... I'm going to kill those guys lineup. Please play Sosh more than nine minutes. The Van if, Reemsdijk, if you're going to play him, play him. The Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, Nylander, offensively sheltered line. Yep. Uh, and the Levo Marlowe Brown line. Holy shit. Interesting. Oh, yes, please. I, I believe that might be the most optimized we've ever seen this Leafs team be. That is, to me, the best lineup that they can put out there in terms of players. I don't know about the combinations. To me, I don't know unless you put Kapanen in there. You're going to get some people going, no, the way they could actually do it is, but please tuck that in your back pocket. That's incredible, and they did what a lot of Leaf fans have been screaming for for a while. God bless Matt Martin, but maybe take him out of the lineup. Now, is he a healthy scratch, or is he a banged up but playable healthy scratch? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, he's Matt Martin at 80%. Wasn't he... Who did he fight recently? He fought someone recently, and he didn't want to go him. Mart, like Martin d- reluctantly took the fight, and I don't think he even threw a punch because he had a busted hand or something. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm trying to remember who it was, but that's such a underrated uh, factor, I think, in a lot of players' games. Like I remember uh, former Marlies coach Craig Gilbert uh, swore during a press conference once because someone challenged Daryl Boyce to a fight, and Boyce couldn't go because he had a banged-up hand. The hand was good enough to play. It but wasn't good have. enough to fight. And so Gilbert goes, well, he's got a busted digits, so why the fuck would he fight? <laughs> he said in the press conference. So maybe Martin's hand was in I can play condition. Mm-hmm. Maybe. But it wasn't in I can fight condition. I'm trying to remember who it was. Someone on the Habs? Ah, trying we to remember. back to back, so maybe it's maintenance scratch day. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, so it's I, – I wouldn't look at this – as a new change. I, I know it's reported <laughs> as a healthy scratch, but I wonder exactly what the definition I'm saying of could healthy be. is here. I'm getting, yeah, and I'm yeah. saying asterisk oh, could be. Oh, it was reported as healthy scratch. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, listen. I bet he plays. I Either think, way. I think he might be on his I own. Think he he, plays I think Saturday. he plays Saturday. Yeah. Either way, I'm kind of cool with it. Yeah. I'd like to see what this looks like. I'm very excited. I'm very excited, too. I think it's kind of crazy that a guy like Martin is out of the lineup, who is like a staple, a Babcock staple regular. More still not in. Now, he might be a Saturday guy, too. That guy's not long for this team. That's okay. It is okay. <laughs> I think but, they, I th- again, I think they like him just to soak up some minutes. Yeah, yeah but this whole we don't like Marlo up the middle thing, like, shit or get off the pot. Like, is, is, uh, Steve, is he a I winger you, or what? I told you, man. I think they're 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 testing him out and testing him with line mates, but I don't think he's going to play there the whole year. I yeah. think he'll play there the entire playoffs, though. 
He doesn't need to play in the he regular doesn't. season. Yeah. I don't I'm not upset about it. I think it's too much Maybe for you're him. right. This is this has been the interesting thing. Okay, so I've been really frustrated with certain things that the Leafs have done so far this season. But now that they've played enough games, I'm starting to see parallels with last year. Where So this is the conversation that I sort of got away from earlier. I thought progress was linear. It was only up and up and up. But it was kind of up and up and up and up and up last year. And then they you know did some workouts in the summer. And then when they came back at the beginning of the season, it's like they took a step back. Just because they hadn't played games in a while. And they needed to be reminded. And some bad habits were in their game. Some stuff that just keeps them afloat. And it worked for a while. Uh, and, I mean, look at them. They're a top-five team in the league. Uh, but they're still developing. Strategies are still being ingrained. They're still getting out kinks. And that also includes, like, Babcock did not tinker like this last year. No, he didn't. He is fidgeting. Like, he cannot get this rock out of his shoe. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, is that him? Like, is that all strategy? Is he trying to find something? Is he trying to hide something? Hmm. I don't get it. Maybe he knows his postseason lineup, and he's kind of messing with it now, and he doesn't need to set it for 82 games. Mm -hmm. And once we get there, we'll know. He'll know what works and what doesn't. And throughout the season, he'll throw teams off, and he'll try out all these different lineups, and hopefully something sticks, and he knows it once game 83 comes. I feel like Nylander and Riley were his biggest projects last year. What do you think it is this year? Marner? And I'm not sure. Try Marner to... and maybe a set line. And maybe that fourth line and first line. Might be Zaitsev in a way. It seems like, like he was really putting him through the ringer. The way they put Riley through the ringer last year, because they did. They didn't put, put him on the power play at Similarities all. Similarities with Zaitsev. I think that's what they're doing. They're but trying the, de- to... the defense seems set, though, like in terms of lineup. Sure, but the they're usage happy. is different. Yes. Yeah, the use, yeah, yeah. for sure. So for sure. that, to me, is the difference. It's... Interesting. I think they're, they're trying to develop Zaitsev into more yeah. of an all-around guy. So, like, we talk about, like, the optimal lineup, but I think he is genuinely trying to develop certain guys. Year one, when they finished last place, Kadri was his big project. It worked. Yep, it sure did. Nylander by the end of last year, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Riley, once the playoffs came, holy shit. And now he looked at Marner last year, a guy who, like, they weren't even sure was going to make the team. Stayed afloat. There weren't... There were some things he wanted to beat out of his game. This season, he has spent a big part of the early part of the season beating it out of his game. Uh, and I, I wonder if Zaitsev's his other project. I'm not sure. I think he is. I think they're definitely putting Zaitsev through the ringer. They want to make him into a... I mean, they didn't, they didn't sign him for seven years for nothing. They're obviously exposing him to see how far they can push him and how much he can learn. It's I like I, just use it like his usage has got to be similar to the way Riley's was last year in terms of minutes played. He's playing a lot of shorthanded, not a lot of power play. It's Riley on the power play who didn't get any power play time last year, and that's where Zaitsev got a lot of his points. I, it's like I almost want to like arrange the Leafs by like stars, dependable vets, soldiers, and projects. Hyman and Brown are soldiers. Babcock throws him out there, and Comrov is a bit of a soldier too. Just listen to me. Never question me. Do exactly what I say. Thank you very much. Then you got guys like Hainsey and Marlowe who you don't even have to talk to. Like they've been in the league for too long. Matthews is a star. Bit of a project, I guess, just because of how young he is. But Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a star. Needs to be protected at least. Riley is sort of graduating into vet. Kadri is a vet. And then you got, like, Zaitsev, like, this is only his second year in North America. Mm -hmm. Even though he signed that giant deal. Like, when Babcock put Riley through the ringer, he had just signed that giant deal. Like, I only just came up with this theory now, but it's starting, it's making a lot of sense. God, this team looks so good on paper. I don't know. I've been talking to people for a long time, like from the day Martin was signed, that they'd be shocked if he uh, finished that contract in the NHL. Is this the beginning of the end, or is this just He's you know, 80% up. healthy? Probably 80% healthy. Right? Woo! Anyway. So uh, excited about It should be interesting, and who knows? The lines could change tomorrow. So <laughs> that's just the lines in the practice day. They're about to play back-to-backs. 
Well, how many games are they going to play before the next podcast? Three? I think so. They got one Monday, right? Yeah. I think it's I think uh, so. isn't it Friday, Saturday, Monday. Got a lot of games coming up. Hey, um... And they've already played, like, the most in the league. Let's do the press conference. Press conference. Here's, I think, a passive-aggressive comment for Adam. <laughs> Great. Spellbound Unicorn wants to know, Adam, as captain of, we have to allow for a margin of error. Aren't mm-hmm. these outrageous calls by human refs just part of the margin of error we have to accept? That's part of what I was saying. What? Say that again. As captain of, we have to <coughs> allow for margin of error. Aren't these outrageous calls by human refs a part of the margin of error we have to accept? Yeah, and I said that the what the what needed clarification was the rule. I said the refs called it the right way. The wait, which player are we talking? We're about talking about the, the, the Hyman Zach Nogle? Hyman Spear. But as also I said, in general, in terms of bad calls, I, said, I don't think it's specifically. I don't think you should focus. Well, I, I'm pretty on sure that, that that's why that comment was made. So if it was about that, what I said was the rule needs clarification. So the refs can call it differently. I disagree with the rule, but I dis- didn't really disagree with the way it was called in that setting because the refs had to call it. Yeah, they had to. Uh, so I think that the rule, I think they need to sit down and go, okay, what is this really? Let's get into all the different scenarios that we can do, and I'm sure they will, um, and, and figure this out because it's obviously a new rule and it needs refining. Fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you're going to have, I mean, last night we talked about the, the Austin Matthews, uh, we talked about the Austin Matthews semi-break there. I mean, very clearly, Austin Matthews' leg is hit first, Well, but the guy ends up hitting the puck, so what is it there? You know here, what I mean? Here's the very clear difference for me, and why I was so mad about the Matthews no goal, and so forgiving of the uh, Matthews breakaway. The Matthews breakaway wasn't a review. It was just a real-time play Mm. that looked pretty damn close. I'm not going to bug him for that. When you screw up a review, ah, you were looking at the thing. Now, I don't think they screwed it up, though. I still think that they... It's clearly a 50-50 thing. A lot of people were on my side, and a lot of people were very mad at me. I I also got a real kick out of all the people from Arizona calling me biased. It is, it's a, it's a great, as we said, it's a gray area. Yeah. So. You're just a biased Leafs fan. Looks Arizona. Hmm. I think I've solved this uh. mystery. <laughs> but you know, you know what I wanted to say, and I couldn't, I couldn't think of a non-condescending way to put this into a tweet. You know what I didn't get years ago when I would talk about Arizona? Comments from Arizona. I got tons after this game. It was great. It's great. There you are. You're in the haunt, uh, the online hockey landscape in a big way. Shout out Arizona fans. Shouldn't have won that game. Bunch so, of yeah. cheaters. So yeah, <laughs> listen, I'm I'm all for for human error, and I, I've said that because I think it's a human game played by humans, and it should be refed by humans. Yeah, um, and it is. But I definitely said very clearly on the last show, the refs need to have that rule clarified for them, so that in that situation they can make the right call. And I think if anybody looks at that. Here's very clearly, whether or not you agree that they made the right call, very clearly Hyman was pushed. Make the Should refs, Hyman be, be, be responsible for his stick? That's up for your... But, but I mean, like, it's, it's, he was very clearly that pushed. That was also a very weak argument to me. He's got to be responsible for his stick. You're allowed to have your stick off the ice. If I take your glove, <coughs> if I take your glove, and I punch myself in the face, are you getting roughing? you got to be responsible for your hand, Adam. <laughs> if I take your stick and I just throw it into my face, is that high sticking? You got to be responsible for your, for your stick, Adam. Oh, but you didn't move it. You might say, "Well, the rule says." Like I, I think the way this gets solved is make refs or the video officials available for question. You know what would be great? You know what would be great? Oh, they television? would never do that. You know what would be great television? Mic the refs up. Broadcast the entire conversation. Oh, I don't think so. They'll never do that. What, are you worried they'll say something inappropriate? Look, Maybe don't well, have an inappropriate sure. conversation over a live mic. No, man, I think you're talking about the integrity of the game at that point, point. the NHL doesn't want that. What are you talking about? Like, what is what is the downturn? What's the down? Because somebody will make a mistake, everybody will make a big deal of it, and what it, it, the focus then becomes the refs suck, or the refs are biased, or this game doesn't know how to be refed, or whatever, rather than what happened in the game. Here, here are your options. Live, after the fact, cower. Well, they're going to cower. There you go. As long as that's out of the way. They're going to cower. 
Yeah. And you as, know what? As long if as I was running the league, that that's what they're doing. You better believe I'd cower too if I was the head of the league. I would never allow that. Are you kidding me? That's fine, and I'm not even saying I blame you. As long as we get it out of the way, that that's what you're doing. That's what I would do. So that's anyway, right. to answer the question, I think the rule needs to be clarified so the refs can call it the right way. I don't like the way it's mm. being called currently, and that goes for most of the time. I'm kind of like, mm, I'm not so sure about this. I'm a reasonable this. guy. You might convince me I was wrong. I've said it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, next question. But I'm just salty. This is from Oscar. Oh, Hello. actually, I have an email. I sent you guys the email, and you guys didn't even respond. Whatever. I'll read it on the show. I was doing stuff. Um... This is from Rachel. What's up, Rachel? Hello. It's a little long. But um, she says, I met my fiance, Chester, on Tinder. He's an Aussie living in Toronto who one day uh, up and sold everything he owned in Australia to move to Canada because he loves hockey. He expected wow. it to be the movie Mystery Alaska. Have you seen that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I have not. But where Russell Crowe is... Uh, Fight round the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Alaskan. <laughs> Bye, Cracky. <laughs> <laughs> and skate to work, but instead he plays on men's leagues three times a week because we live in Toronto. Right. We bonded over video games, board games, and hockey. Um, he liked my Tinder photo because of my Leafs jersey. And he was a Pens fan because this was the first team he saw play live when he when traveling to North America. I pushed your podcast on him, which led him to get getting us a pack of Leafs slash Marley tickets. Now we have two Leafs jersey in the house, and it's a, and they're a big Leafs fan. They proposed, he proposed last February, and we're getting married next August. And he, she doesn't think they'd be together if he hadn't converted to a Leafs fan. Uh, she oh. just wants to say thank you so much for helping yeah. make my fiance a real Leafs fan. We talk about every podcast episode and watch these videos together, which is a really good break from wedding planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, here, here. You know, uh -huh. he did buy low with uh, being a Leafs fan, which is good business practice. But mm -hmm. uh, boy, did he sell at the wrong time with being a Pens fan. Yeah. True. Uh, and here's a little bit. I was wondering if you guys would be able to shout out Chester. This is your shout out on the episode this Thursday, which is right now. His birthday is this weekend. Happy birthday, Chester. Happy birthday, Chester. Yeah. Here, let's let's not be obnoxious about it. Happy birthday, mate! <laughs> Sorry. Happy birthday, Chester. <laughs> shout out, Sasky. And he, and he still Do you watches know Sasky Chester. Sorry. And he still watches new episodes of Dragon Ball Z every week, which I didn't know existed. Which are still coming out, I guess. There you go. Yeah, but it's Dragon Ball Kai Zen Z B Double D <laughs> friggin' Also, Rachel says she's pretty sure she's neighbors with you, Adam, because she's seen you at Rabba a couple times. Oh. <laughs> I go to there a lot. But she's too afraid to say hi. Oh, Rachel, next time just say hi. There you go. You ever get those uh, Portuguese custard tarts? They're at the front. No, I never. Oh, oh, and she said the photo good. of her dog. That I'll leave. Is it a good doggo? Oh, what a good doggo! <laughs> oh, oh, that's that's... Good. I gotta get one of those for Bindi. Where do you get those? Oh, the store. Just he's pretty cute. Dog. Oh, he's wearing plaid. He's like a real Canadian now. <laughs> that's how you're. You become a real Canadian. Is you wear plaid. And there you go. Nothing else. It's no citizenship ceremony. Plaid. Plaid. I thought that was right. That was very nice. I like that. That's good. All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> See you Tuesday. Yeah. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.